I usually try to keep things positive and lighthearted on my channel, but I guess this week I was just feeling a little feisty. So here are 20 good reasons why you'll never be a good HVAC technician. There are several reasons why you'll never be a good technician, but there are many of you great technicians out there that know even more reasons why technicians never fully make it. Let me know in the comments below what some of the other reasons are and feel free to trash talk me back if I'm wrong on any of these. A good HVAC technician must have the hands-on skills of a mechanic, electrician, pipe fitter, welder, plumber, fabricator, duct mechanic, insulator, rigger, analyst, electronics technician, chemist, computer programmer, computer technician, millwright, and a machinist. Number one, in my opinion, Nate certification is a money grab, but if you won't continuously train yourself to try to learn more, you'll never be a good technician. Number two, an inviting personality. If you can't hold your head up high and flash a little smile here and there, if people are afraid to talk to you or feel like something's wrong with you while you're making the repair or installing a system, you'll never be looked at as a well-rounded technician. Number three, you won't read the instructions. Someone who installs a system or replaces a control board without reading the instructions, creating a callback for something that they could have easily prevented, will never be considered a great technician. RTFM. Read the fucking manual. It's not just a newly created text term. It's something that we assume that you would do on your own before coming to us for answers. Number four, you leave your work area dirty after you leave. If you can't wipe down your work area or pick up the little plastic pieces that you stripped off the wiring or wipe off the service valve area after the refrigerant has sprayed out a little bit, you'll never be a good HVAC technician. If you can't wipe down the attic access after coming down the ladder or have the common sense to put some white caulking around a return grill that might be a little gappy, you're just another technician. Number five, you gotta be reliable. If you can't get to work on time, you'll never fully be respected by your peers. Anyone who says that they'll do something but flakes out on it all the time will never become a good HVAC technician. Number six, you can't read a blueprint. It's something listed on most descriptions for an HVAC applicant, but so many people have never learned how to read and understand blueprints. Blueprints will never replace seeing something in plain view, but you'll never be a great technician if you can't read blueprints. Number seven are some of the technical aspects. If you can't or won't set the blower speed on a furnace or an air handler based on the chart in the manual, you'll never be a good technician. If you can't, or you just refuse to check the gas pressures on a furnace after an install or replacing a gas valve, you'll never be a good technician. Number eight, if you can't run a duct properly. If you can't run a duct and pull it tight in a straight line with long smooth bends or your ductwork sags after you've installed it, you'll never be a good install tech. Number nine, you gotta have patience. HVAC techs who blow through service calls to get to the end of their day quicker to make more commissions lack the patience that they need to step back after repair and look at what they've done. It's like those cars who weave in and out of traffic to get to their off-ramp 15 seconds faster, all the while putting others in the back of their mind because they need to be somewhere else. Number 10, you borrow tools all the time. If you're a new technician in the field, you should be buying at least one new tool for your arsenal every paycheck. It doesn't have to be new tools. eBay and flea markets are great places to pick up new tools for yourself. On the other hand, if you've been a tech for a while and you keep borrowing this or that tool from your partners on the job, you probably aren't looked at as a good HVAC technician. Number 11, integrity. If you were raised to freely deceive people based on your needs, and if you don't care about lying to people so that you can pad your own wallet, you might replace a lot of parts or sell a lot more systems than me, but you'll never be a good tech in my eyes. Number 12, you won't embrace change. Some people don't like new technology or they're afraid of screwing up to try to repair new technology, so they avoid it. If you don't understand or you just won't embrace the fact that technology is gonna get more technical every few years exponentially, 
You may be a good technician now, but you'll eventually be replaced by someone who does and is ready to dive right in now. Number 13, you jump to conclusions. Some technicians can't focus on the sequence of operations for the system, so they just repair what usually needs to be fixed on their new unit. A good technician can evaluate the system based on what's supposed to happen, repair it, and make sure the system runs right after it's going again. Number 14, you talk too much. People who talk too much are annoying. It's not good to be the person that's always running their mouth on the job. Talking about how good it was at the last place they worked at or bragging about this and that, there's even those guys who always have to one-up another person's story so that they'll look cooler uh, and those guys never get the respect of an HVAC technician. If an employee is trying to show you how they want something done, take a little advice, zip it, and listen before opening your mouth. Learning a little social grace will go a long way towards being well-liked and considered a good technician. Number 15, you don't talk enough. There's a fine line to walk when it comes to communicating. You're damned if you do sometimes, and you're damned if you don't. If you never ask a question or you don't respond to people who talk to you, you're not talking enough. In my opinion, text messaging is so easy. If someone texts you a question or some information regarding work, responding to them with an okay or no problem will go a long way. But if you don't talk enough, you'll never be a good technician. Number 16, you're a parts changer. This goes hand in hand with other items on the list, but parts changers are not good technicians. Knowing the sequence of operations and how the system is supposed to work is key to becoming a technician who can identify problems and repair the problem in as few visits as possible. I totally get it. Every technician has identified the wrong repair needed at one time or another. Everyone makes mistakes, but consistently just throwing parts at a system and hoping that it'll work is not the sign of a good HVAC technician. Number 17, you don't have a sense of alignment or appearance. Can you take a look at a line and tell if it's straight? Can you look at a box and tell if it's parallel with the wall? Can you use a level? How about this? Can you tell if a job looks clean rather than just something that's just thrown in? Little things like applying primer neatly and facing PVC lettering away from the viewer, uh, they're all really good practices to use. And that these things are the ones that will set a good tech apart from the bad one. If you can't grasp the concept of uniformity and a common sense installation practices like making your lines flow straight and your conduit run smoothly, you'll never be a good HVAC technician. Number 18, you write like a five-year-old and you don't know how to spell. If you can't write your service notes on an invoice neatly and write up the estimate for your customer in legible print, it's going to be hard to take you seriously. If you won't proofread your typed up invoices or estimates, it's going to look bad and people are going to think that you're a sloppy tech. Number 19, you don't like to be told how to do something somebody else's way. You can't come into a new workplace and expect to be able to do things the way you've always done it. If you wanted that, you should have just stayed at your old job. That's why companies like to hire brand new technicians sometimes because they come in with an open mind, ready to learn. Those who don't like to be told what to do will never be viewed as a good HVAC technician. And number 20, your service van looks dirty. Some might say that a sparkling clean van inside and out probably isn't used enough. On the opposite end of the spectrum, a van that is consistently thrashed inside and filthy on the outside indicates a sloppy technician who doesn't care about his work. There's always a middle ground for everything though. HVAC technicians work hard. But if you can't take the time out of your day to keep your van looking decent, you'll never be looked at as a competent HVAC technician. Well, these are just 20 reasons, and I could come up with so many more, and I know that you can too, why technicians never realize their full potential. Let me know what you think in the comments below, how you feel about this list. And if you feel like doing a little bit of trash talking, I'm fine with that as well. I promise to come back next week, lighthearted and positive. I guess just this week, I was feeling a little feisty about some things that I had on my mind. So anyways, uh, if this is your first time watching our channel, please click subscribe down here on the bottom right. And if you click that little bell next to it, you'll be notified of all of our videos as they come out. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you on the next video. 
And you're watching Fox Family Heating and Air. Don't forget to subscribe. And check out more of our videos by clicking on the right side of the screen.